Hi, my name is Dr. Waldo Concepcion. I'm a consultant, plasma surgery at Medic Clinic City Hospital. Hi, my name is Farhad Janahi. I'm a kidney transplant surgeon at Medic Clinic City Hospital. And today we are here to answer your questions about kidney transplantation. So kidney transplant is a surgical procedure where we place a kidney either from a living donor or from a deceased donor to someone who has kidney failure. Because kidney transplantation is about providing the best outcome for you for the long term. In the evaluation, we evaluate every organ that we are concerned, your heart, your intestines, your liver, your everything to be sure that we optimize your condition, that when you get at a transplant, you have a good outcome, not just for the surgery. So once a patient um, gets into what we call uh, end-stage kidney disease, this patient is put on a waiting list. And in this country, a person can receive a kidney either from a living related, one of the loved ones donates a kidney to them from a living person, or we put them on a waiting list for a deceased donation. So kidney does many functions, and a person who doesn't have any kidney function, they have to be on dialysis. And dialysis only does 10% of a functioning kidney. So after receiving a kidney transplant, that person will go back to routine life. They are not attached to a machine, a dialysis machine anymore. They can work, they can go back to what they love, they can travel freely from dialysis. Essentially, start understanding what a kidney patient suffers when it's in a chronic kidney disease. One is that uh, they have severe imbalance of the cells of the body that require uh, hemodialysis, or the cleaning the blood through dialysis in different ways. Number two is the restrictions. You have significant amount of restrictions, mostly because your body needs to maintain the salts of the body intact in order that your heart doesn't suffer you, and your other organs don't suffer. Third is significant amount of high blood pressure because a lot of the toxic substance in your body does not get cleared by dialysis and you develop a hypertension. And from there is quality of life. If you imagine that you have to be four hours a day, three times a week in a machine, and then one hour before or after, this really changes the quality of life of the patient. Risk of the transplant is, is it's like in a significant amount of, it's like any other large surgery, significant surgery, complex surgery. Number one, we always, let's look at the kidney. What are the, the possible things that can happen is that the kidney doesn't work well at the beginning. And that means that after transplant, we will do dialysis to maintain you in good condition until the kidneys start working. That's what we call delayed graft function. Second aspects are general risk of any uh, major surgery that's bleeding. What the percentage of that in our, in our system here, much less than 5%. Um, infections, you're going to be medications that you need to prevent infections. In this day and age, COVID and viral infections, we need to create a very strong habit on you to prevent this by healthy aspects. Wash your hands, wear your mask when you're in public, and most important is be sure that people are sick, don't get close to you. Uh, third is uh, long-term medications. Even though it seems very simple, we need to be sure to help you before transplant that you understand that we need to find ways that you keep medication for the rest of your life. And this is not just compliance to the medication, but it's access to medications. And this requires education, we need to understand your health insurance, you need to understand all your, your ways to obtain the medications. Um, a patient who, is a, who has end-stage kidney disease has to be evaluated to see if they can receive a kidney transplant because not everyone who has end-stage kidney disease may be suitable for transplant surgery. They have to be infection-free, they have to be fit, 
in terms of heart, lungs, it has to be good to stand the, uh, the surgery and also that they have to be on immunosuppression. So there should be no contraindication for immunosuppression. Let's start two days before the transplant. Two days before the transplant, you receive a call from our coordinator and we tell you uh, we have a potential donor. We want to be sure, first of all, how you do in this moment. We want to be sure you don't have fever, chills, nausea, vomiting, COVID, any type of infection, because if you are, the transplant probably is not the best choice for you at this moment. When you get the call and everything is okay, because we'll call you whenever everything's ready. At that time, the coordinator will check that we have a sample of your blood in the, in the storage to do the, uh, compare your blood to the donor to be sure that we assess compatibility. Following that, if you are compatible and the match shows that you are, you are, you are safe to, to undergo the transplant, as soon as we have a time that is determined that we're going to have the surgery for the donation, then you'll be admitted to the hospital for the final checkup to be sure your potassiums are okay, your dialysis is optimized, your cardiac condition is stable, and then you are ready for transplant. So life after transplant is completely different from life on being on dialysis. This person is free of dialysis, they can work, they can travel, they can uh, enjoy what they like to do. So it's a big difference, it makes a huge difference in terms of quality of life, social life, and health-wise. So it's a big difference. <laughs>